So the game this weekend is supposed to be Ohio State and Penn State, which I hope to God Penn State wins. But I'm with you, Danny. Anybody oh, else playing a game worth watching? West Virginia, Texas Tech. Really? Yeah. You really think Texas Tech is going to win? No. Okay, well, that's not going to be a game. Anybody got Alabama against him? Who's Alabama play? Yeah, so they're playing? South Carolina's playing Missouri, isn't it? I don't know who's going to win that game. Uh, Alabama's playing Oh, God. They're playing Burns High School. All right. Oklahoma's playing Baylor. So it's going to be Penn State. Penn State and Ohio State. Oh, is Stanford and Notre Dame playing who? Penn, Penn State's going to Penn State's going to win three quarters, and then Ohio State's no. going to try to come back the last quarter and win in the last three minutes of the game. You wait to see what it takes. Stanford and Notre Dame. Yeah, Stanford Notre Dame. Yeah, that might be a good game. What? Well, why aren't you rooting for Notre Dame? They're in the all children's conference. I think. I mean, I'm supposed to be watching. Him okay. All right. <laughs> Use a calculator to find the decimal approximation for the following expression. So the camp itself. The cosecant. I mean, well, first of all, the cosecant is the reciprocal of what? Uh, sine. Sine. So how can you use that? One divided by sine. Exactly. So the cosecant is equal to one divided by the sine of theta. So in this case, you would type in. 1 divided by the sine of 354.32. Make sure you're in degree mode. Now, a lot of people say, is that a test question? It could be a test question, but I'm going to be honest with you. How many times do you see cosecant in real life? None. How many times do you see cosecant in... Calculus 1 and 2, very rare. Okay? So I'm not going to test you. There's there's Mr. Swords. I was wondering where you were. I held up. How was breakfast? Was it good? Did you eat it? Did I hop or what? Anyway, so I would ask this question, but I don't consider it a test question because it's not mandatory that you know how to find the cosecant of an angle in real life, and it's not really that big a deal finding a cosecant of an angle in Calc 1 and 2. So if, if, if I put anything on a test, I might put that on a test as a freebie just for points, but I like to stick with the conversion, with the identities, especially the next unit. The next unit, we're going to hammer the identities over and over and over because that's important in Calc 2. Capiche? All right, next. Next question, 8.359 slash 14. Find the exact values of the six trigonometric function of the following angle, 150 degrees. What is 150 degrees? 90 plus what? Thank you for the interaction. I appreciate that, whoever it was. Thank you so much. 90 plus what? 60. Or you could say 180 minus what? 30. 30. So you got a special angle of 30 degrees. Dango 1, square root of 3, dango 2. And what is 2? Always what? Positive. The 1 is positive, but what is the 3? Negative. Now, could you do it that way, or could you do it in the first quadrant and just apply all students take calculus? You could do it that way if you want to. I don't care which one you do. Now, I'm just going to do the sine, cosine, and tangent, and then y'all can do the other, okay? So, the sine. Oscar had. Oscar, one over what? Two. Over there in the middle. Cosine. Cosine. Oscar had a hump. Square root of 3 over 2. That's fine. I can just sit right here. 
Are you through interrupting class? So Coney Hall, are you through interrupting class? Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm picking on I'm picking Shut on Miss Barnett. She's Shut up. Problem. Okay, yes, ma'am. All right, uh, sine, cosine, tangent. Tangent, Oscar had a hunk of what? Of cold. apple, which would be one over square root of three, and then multiplied by the square root of three over square root of three, which is equal to negative square root of three over three. So there's your three. I'm not going to do the others because I think y'all can find the reciprocal of those. But like I say, in, in trigonometry, what's the first thing you should do? Find out what? Where you what? Are. Find out where you are. That's the first rule of trig. When you're talking about finding angles, that's the first thing you do. I don't care if they give you pi over 6. You change pi over 6 to a degree because you need to know where you are. Question. Great. Complain. Okay. Next. And these are homework questions, Miss Barnett, that we're going over. Thank you, since there's so many on there to do. Yeah, there's a lot. Let's see, this is 8.335 slash 9. 35 slash 9. Okay, we got a couple of more to do, and then we're going to go to the test and look at the test. I got two tests up today. The review, the algebra review, and the unit one test. So you've got two tests to work on this weekend. Rewrite cosine of 42 degrees in terms of its cofunction. All right, what do they want you to do here? Okay, y'all can interact. That's what that, I'm not rhetorical. That's, that's interaction. What can we do? Well, what's to, it says cofunction. So that would be um, sine, right? Hmm. That'd be sine. Well, yeah. What what I'm saying is 42 degrees. What do you see about the 42 degrees? It says rewrite the cosine in terms of the cofunction. It probably want you to write it in terms of one of the identities. That's what I would expect. Okay, because you don't really know the 42 degrees. Right quick. Uh, yeah. Okay, right here. We haven't covered the co-functions very much. Yeah. We haven't covered them. Okay. Uh, I believe we actually skipped the co-functions because you don't use them very much. Uh, so, therefore, the cosine, that would be the what? The secant of what? 60, I mean, uh, what? 38 degrees? Somebody check me on that. Is it 90? Yeah. Should be 38 degrees. We don't use no function very much. Whatever. 42. 42. 42. It'd be 60. What is 42. the cofunction of 42 to 90? 48. Okay, 48, not 38. Yeah. So that would be the secant or the cosecant? The secant. Secant of 48 or 48. Yeah. Oh, I see 40. Because we haven't covered cofunctions, and I don't really. Okay, the sign of 48. I'm sorry, the sign of 48. Uh, like I said, we haven't covered much of these. And you don't ever use the cofunctions in real life, so I don't cover them. And you don't use them in Calc 1 or Calc 2 either. I won't put, I won't put a cofunction on it. So the seeking of 11 would be what? Cosecant of 69. Cosecant of 69. And can't type. Darn, I've got that wrong too. Is it 180? 79. 79. Thank you. I can't add either. 
Yes, 79. Not a test question, not even a relevant test question in my opinion. Uh, let's see, 8.5. Let's see what question this is. 15 slash 4. 15 slash 4. Find the six circular function real uh, following by hand. Do not use a calculator. This is a test question. Anytime it says by hand, yes. Or do not use a calculator. I want you to be able to find the six functions by hand. All right, so what do we do here? Negative pi over three. First thing you do is find what? Where you are. Yeah. Okay, so that's the first thing you do. Negative pi over three. You know you're going this way because it's negative. But what is pi over three? So you change pi over three that's into what? 180 over pi, and that's what? 60 degrees. So you know it's 60 degrees this way. So you know this is one, square root of what? Square root of three and two. Which one's negative? You know that one's negative, so now you can do your, as simple as that. Please do not make the six trigonometric functions difficult. The first thing you do is you always find out where you are. You throw away the pi over three, because you never use that in real life. You throw that away and you say, okay, I gotta find 60 degrees. The negative tells me I'm turning negative in the negative direction. In the real world, if you turn a right angle, you always turn to the right. But in academia, that's a negative. Anyway, to make a long story short, we know this is the opposite. Negative square root of 3. Oscar had did square root of 3 over 2. Negative square root of 3 over 2. A hump would be 1 over 2. So the cosine, Oscar had A hump of apple of apple is going to be what square root of three over one so tangent is equal to the square root of three over one and of course if you want the others you just flip them upside down rationalize whenever you need to that is a test question make sure you know how to do those don't drop things in class next question That's the one. Uh, do y'all see any others? 110, 111. Anybody else send one in? I don't know why my 111 folder is not working. All the other ones are working. Yeah, y'all are special in many ways. Yeah. All right. Now let's go look at the test. Look at the test. I've got two tests that are up. Let's talk about, since this is the first time, this will answer most of your questions about, oh, what about the test? What about the test? Well, when you pull up the test, there's the two tests. And you notice it has several things of information here. Take care of the DAD questions. What are the DAD questions? Well, it takes care of the, when is it due? There it is, due, due date. 10, 4, 18. You got to wait and take it. That takes care of the house striking the lightning and the five dead grandmothers. And what else? What else do y'all come up with? I don't know. Uh, yeah, the uh, word. Uh, so that takes care of that. How many times you got to take it? Five times on the five. first one. Why? Well, the first one is algebra. Algebra is repetition, repetition, repetition. If I give you 25 questions on that test, then you've done five of them. How many times have you? How many times have you repeated them? Well, five times 120. Five times 25 is 125. So you've done 125 questions. I think that's enough repetition. Yeah. And you've got three chances to take it. What will I take? I'll take the higher of the what? I'll take the higher of the three. Highest of the three. Highest of the five. Okay. So you also got 105 minutes to take the, I think that's supposed to be 120 minutes, I can't remember, or 100 minutes, I can't remember. I don't know why it says 105, because 90 should be 120. I might have went in and showed you all how to do that, I don't know. And 90 minutes to take the Unit 1 test. The reason I give you 90 minutes is to take care of all those excuses that you need this and you need that, and, and my dog chased the cat around the house, and I had to stop. Well, you got 90 minutes. I on keyboard. Okay? So, click on this, and it asks you, it says, are you ready to take the test? Now, there's a reason for this. I have had people 
to take a test and I'm at home and these people live in Anderson and I'm at home so that means the same things are going on. There's a lightning storm outside, a thunderstorm, hail, rain, and not to mention what's going on in their house. You know, the, you could have five or six kids running around. You could have, you know, you know, the dog chasing the cat and then you've got a lightning storm outside and I get a text or a phone call from a student while it's lightning outside that their test went down and I'm like, why are you even taking the test right now? Okay, so do not take the test during a lightning storm. Do not take the test when you've got a half of, you know, half the house running around. You take the test when? When it's nice. <coughs> It's a good time for you to take the test. You don't take it during a flood. You don't take it during a snowstorm. You don't take it during a lightning storm. Okay? And do not put it off to the last minute because I can look up when you took the test. So if you call me up and say, Hubert, something's wrong. My, my test blew up. And I look on there and you took it at 11 o'clock on the 4th of, no, of October, you're on your own. Okay? Period. So start the test. I'll go through and let you look at the test. How do I do these tests? Well, first of all, you're going to have 10 to 15 questions of the DAD questions. The questions that these dumb, dumb people ask at the end of the semester after grade turn in, uh, I didn't know you get a zero for an incomplete uh, assignment. Uh, I didn't know I was supposed to call you and tell you I was going to be out during the unit three test. Okay, those questions. There's about 10 of them. You get 10 on a 25 question test, that's 40 points. So everybody should make a 40 on this year unit review test. Will they? No. No, somebody will turn in a 27. Okay? You also, also, same thing. You also need to look at the question, you need to read the question, you need, because sometimes these questions can be tricky. All right? You have about 20, you have about 10 questions that are bonus questions. You have about 15 that are math questions. So make sure you read the math questions carefully. All right? So go ahead and write this down. I pull my questions. Okay? There's 15 questions on this test that are math related. That means you have about 150 questions that I've pulled into this test that it's pulling from. So I've got about 10 questions per question that it's pulling from. It could be pulling from another section, okay? Miss Smith could be doing number one on the test. <clears throat> and it'd be coming from 1.1, where Mr. Jones is pulling number one is coming from 3.2, okay? So what are the chances of you getting a test the same as the person beside you in the computer lab? Highly unlikely. Very unlikely. You also have randomized uh, orders. Each test you pull up is going to be a different order from the, from the previous test, and it algorithmically generates. So there is not going to be any person that has the same test as the person beside them. Now, if you want to take time from your 90 minutes to help somebody else, go ahead, knock yourself out. Okay? But what happens there? You lose time. You lose your time. And if you want to let your grade suffer because of a sandbagger, then I'll be it. You know, the best way to teach, the best way to learn is to teach. So make a note of these questions. I'm going to go through them. Why are you leaving me? You leaving me so quick? Yeah, sorry. Okay. That hurts my feelings. I know the answer to the question, so. Uh, what, what? I know the answers to all your questions. Uh, okay, yeah, that's right. You've seen them before. Have a good so, day. All right, so here we go. That's the question we went over. This is a homework question. I told you it was a good test question, and there you see it again. There's another test question. You see this? You've seen this one before. That's where you do the horizontal and vertical shift. What is this one? The 4 is attached to the X, so it is a what? It's a horizontal shift, 4 to the left. Okay, open dot or closed dot? Open. open dot, which means parentheses or brackets? Parentheses. parentheses. So you would say it would be this one right here, 
and it would be negative infinity to positive 2, which would be this one. The short ones I'll answer. Okay? If a student does not complete a homework assignment or test, what grade will be recorded for that assignment? Zero. Zero. Not and that's the student that came to me and said, I didn't know that, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Use transformations. Okay, what will, what will this one be? This one will be a cube root function. All right, so you need to look up a cube root function because I don't think I gave you that one on the, on the uh, that's x to the one-third. So you need to look and see what a cube function looks like. Okay, so graph that on your graphing calculator. You've got a negative, which means you're negative in front of the function, which means it's going to throw it in the opposite direction. And then this 6 is attached to the x, so that's a horizontal shift of 6 to the what? The right. To the right. Okay, so the first one, which one is it? Go, go to your calculator and tell me which one it is. Okay, it doesn't take that long. X to the one-third power. Come on. Y'all can do it. Good gracious, I could plot it on a piece of paper by now. X to the one-third power. It's C. Thank you. Okay, so now I'm going to go down here. And what does the, what does the negative do? Put the negative in front of it. It flips it, so which one is it going to be? It's going to be C again. God, oh, that's nice. <laughs> okay, and then plus 6. Now, this is the negative, so it's going to be plus 6. So it's going to have a horizontal shift of 6 to the what? Right. Which one? I think it's vertical. It should be vertical. The negative. Do the negative and make sure it's not D. Is the negative B or D? All you have to do is insert a negative in front of it, people. No, oh, it's C. It's C? Okay, well then yeah. this don't look right because the I don't unless it's this one. I think they ran out of room on the graph. Look at that. Yeah. It looks like that one's the answer. We can zoom in on it. But yeah, let's zoom in and see if it... I don't want to say it's B. I say it's B because it's not a vertical shift. Vertical shift would be outside the radical. Oh, okay. I say B. Okay, next question. <laughs> When does the homework terminate? The only answer that I can cannot I cannot Mickey read. Mouse. And next one. Does Hubert replace your lowest test grade with your final exam grade? Water. This is the one that the student showed up at after grade turn in, a week after grade turn in, and he was he was a deadhead. And he, he basically called me and said, I thought you replaced the lowest test grade with your final exam grade. That's what your bonus question said. <laughs> no way. And you know what? And you know why he said that? Sure. He missed. Okay, no. everybody with me. I think I told y'all this at the beginning of the semester. He missed the last <coughs> test. Okay. First of all, how many days did I give y'all to take a test? A week. A week. Seven days. He missed the last test. And then he said, "Well, I didn't know we had a last test." Doesn't make sense. This is also the cat that didn't even bring a pencil or a notebook or anything to class. He just walked in and oh, just sat. He's smoking. And wonder why people don't. I ain't got no use for people at that period. Anyway, shut up. Use the following set builder notation. So this is 8. So x is between negative 8, less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to negative 8, less than or equal to, or less than, negative what? Six. Six. So it might be this one right here, I think, D. I can't circle or not circle. What'd you uh, say? The bracket. In the the bracket point. goes with the closed circle, the uh, equals, and the parentheses is always you can't touch it. 
If you miss a question on a test and you believe it is correct, what do you do? No, you send several emails to Hubert with the last one saying hello. <laughs> yeah, that's what you do. Call Hubert's office five or six times. All right, what's this one doing? It says, I think we went over this one the other day, didn't we? Give the graph of the function blah, blah, blah. F of x plus 5. So if I plug in x plus 5 to the function, it's with the function. That means a horizontal shift of 5 to the what? Right. It's always opposite. Horizontal shift is always left. Okay. Next. What should a student do if something happens and they are out of class for a while? This is a student that took a cruise and missed the Unit 3 test. Oh, and with both the deadhead and the cruise check, both of them, I give a week at the end of the semester. I open up all assignments at the end of the week for you to, if you miss something, and they miss that too. Hubert, you should change your own little yeah, if you take a cruise and act stupid at the end of the semester, <laughs> I will be lenient. All right, which one is this one? It's going down. Sorry. Okay, why is it down instead of a horizontal shift? It doesn't have brackets. Well, it's not included with the square. It's not attached. So that's a vertical shift of negative 5, so that would be this one. I need that one. Good. You might get one right. <laughs> okay. C. It's the only one. Why is C the only one? It's the only one that has an actual phone number. If you look at your overall grade one day and it has decreased from several days ago, what has happened? You were in the Russian C. Place. I will take A. But C is the correct answer. Why does Hubert not entertain extra credit, extra points, dropping any grades during the final week of the semester? Bravo. This comes from several emails at the end of the semester. I've got an 89.6, and I was wondering if you could give me an extra extra credit assignment. I don't give them a response, much less an extra credit assignment. So B is your answer. If you think about it, I give you four unit tests, and I drop each one of those two, okay? So I'm technically dropping four times two is how many grades? Eight. Eight grades. I'm technically dropping eight grades. Everybody should make a 40 on the test because I'm giving you 40 points to boot. Which so do not, do not email me at the end of the semester asking me for extra points. Although covered in the handouts the first day of class by Hubert, what is the best way to communicate? Bravo. Bravo. Good. <laughs> Okay, do this one. Determine the domain and range of the following relation from its graph and tell whether the relation is a function. The domain is what? 5 to infinity. 5 to infinity. Bracket 5, comma, infinity. The range is from 3 to infinity. Bracket 3, comma, Infinity, close bracket, or trace parentheses. Is the graph to the right the graph of a function? Vertical line test says? Yes. yes. The only thing that's not a function is anything circular or hyperbola? Hyperbola. 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 Okay. If you have incomplete assignments and Hubert puts a zero in for the grade, what will the zero do to your grade? Decrease it. Decrease it. Oh, tapioca. I like if you tapioca. take several forms of a test in Hubert's class, this means a unit test, how is it counted? Yeah, I will take that one. That's a good answer. <laughs> Takes the highest grade and drops the lowest. Suppose that H and K are both positive numbers. Match the equation. H is positive. Okay, so that means it's going to go to the left. Okay, if it says... H and K are positive numbers. All right, that means it's going to go to the left because what's a negative times a positive? Negative, so it's going to go to the left. So left, so that's going to be either B or C or D. So A is out of it. K is a negative, so it looks like it's going to be B. 
And everybody can look at that and tell which one it is. Say. Determine the domain and range of the function. The function of the graph is shown to the right. So what is the domain? All what? All the real numbers. So that's going to be parentheses, infinity, negative infinity, and positive infinity. And the range is from 1 I think that's one. I think it's negative one. Oh, negative one, sorry. Negative one, comma, infinity. Parentheses. Next. What's the only one that's correct? I don't know. I can't them up. Yep, the only one that equals 100. I don't know. I can't read in both of you guys. What is the last day of class for this semester? Thank you. In your grade book, to find the overall grade, you have completed all your assignments. Which should you click? Overall, overall grade. grade. Oh. Butter cookie. That's the one I get the email. Where do I find my grade? I have no idea. <laughs> when is the week of finals? Oh, no. Uh, Are you that's dumb, that's uh, World War II. Okay. <laughs> December the 4th or the 10th. I saw December. I didn't. And that's the test. <laughs> and that's how I do my test. Now, each one of your tests will have these four, these, these, you'll have half math questions and half bonus questions. So you'll get each one of these bonus questions four times. You got four unit tests. Technically, with the review, is five times. So you're going to have each one of these bonus questions five times. And guess what? People will still ask these questions at the end of the semester. All right, next test. The Math 111 Unit 1 test. This is one y'all might want to write down. You got 90 minutes, three times, 29 questions. So you know half of those are going to be bonus questions. Of course, there's the one we just answered. Uh, wait till after the grade turn in. Communication is key. It's not supposed to bunch them up. It's supposed to match. It's supposed to mix them up, but it's not doing it. So uh, decrease it. Come on, really? It's supposed to ask me. Let's say awards me extra points. Okay, it's not supposed to do this. It's doing the. There we go. Cosine of five pi over six. Do that one. That shouldn't take long. Again, I don't put a lot of a through f's. I just put basic questions that you should need before we get into identity. So what's the first thing you do? Find out where you are. 5 pi over 6. What is that? 5 pi over 6. Not negative. 5 pi over 6 multiplied by 180 over pi. 60, 80, 150. So it's 150 degrees. We just did this one for a homework question, did we not? We did a similar one. 150 degrees. I think it was 150 degrees. They didn't give you 5 pi over 6, did they? I think they did 150 degrees. Cosine is equal to Oscar had a hunk. Well, that's going to be negative square root of 3 over what? 2. That's your answer. All right, you're going to get one on this one right. So you take your handy dandy cursor and negative, take your handy dandy fraction bar and negative square root of 3 over, say my way is hard, is that what you said? Yeah, it's different. Uh, it's actually easier. I like memorization. I like, you I like what? The whole circle. I like your way. Well, everybody, everybody likes it a certain way. Everybody, different strokes for different folks. Oh yes, Miss McClure, I don't understand. I only know Sakatoa. <laughs> Next question. Let's do that. One. Find the value the interval zero to pi over two. Now the pi over two tells you what? Zero to ninety. 
So the cosine, they want you to find it in radians. So what does that mean we got to do? Change it to radians. Change it to radians. So do that. Round to eight decimal places. My gosh. <laughs> Yeah, you got to take the inverse cosine, and they want it in radians. So turn your calculator into radian mode and do it. And what'd you get? Um, Thank you. Now make sure everybody got that. Next question. There you go. A piece of land has a shape shown in the given figure. Find the value of X. First thing I would do is break it up into two triangles. Yep. I mean, they don't That's the first thing I would do. I would say this triangle right here is X. And 5520. Well, 5520 minus 3320. Somebody take 5520 minus 3350. What is it? 5520 minus 3350. Um, that would be 20. Uh, 21.7. Okay, change that to degrees and minutes. 21 what? 30, 30. Say again? 21, 30. 21, 30. Yeah. Okay, 21, 30 there. And then you have 3350 here. And you got 196.9 here. There you go. Now you're going to have to start with this one because this one has more what? It has more information. So you have to start there. What's the 21 what? 2130. 30. So you got the adjacent. So I would go with the cosine. Cosine of 3350 is equal to 196.9 over opposite. No, no, of the hypotenuse, sorry. Okay, so the hypotenuse is equal to 196.9 divided by cosine of 3350, and somebody do that for me. Make sure it's in degree mode. And then you can use your Pythagorean theorem and figure the this one right here. But you, you need the hypotenuse because the hypotenuse here is the same as the hypotenuse here. So that feeds your information into this one, and then you can keep going. You really don't need the X over here. You don't need this one. You don't need that one. So somebody tell me what you got for H. 237.04. 237.04. Everybody else get that? Yes or no? Uh, yes. Very slow. Okay, I heard a bunch of people speak at the same time. All right. Okay, you got 237. We got one person got 237, so we're going to call it 237. So we got 237.04, and that's H. We got this. We need this. So that means hypotenuse and opposite. Oscar had sine uh, 2130 is equal to X over 237.04. Multiply by both 237.04, 237.04 times the sine of 21.30 is equal to x. Somebody do that for me and tell me what you get. 
237.04 times the sine of 2130. Just blurt it out whenever you get it. 86.87. What'd y'all get? 86.9. Okay, I got two people says 86.9. Pendleton, Easley, Oconee? That means I want y'all to interact. Well, Easley and Oconee, I want you to interact. Yeah, that's the same thing. Okay, good. So 86.9. So we'll put and move on. As you can see, I'm not going to put a bunch of questions that's going to trick you. I'm not that type of teacher. I'll tell you on the homework when a question is stupid, when a question is not applicable to what we're going to in the future. I'm very, we call it, pragmatic. Is that the right word? I don't know. If you miss a question on a test and you believe it is correct, what should you do? You should send either, either, several emails. Yep. All right. Use a calculator to approximate the cosine of negative 3.4875. Now, I assume since it's not saying radians that there wants you degrees. So leave your and give me four decimal places. Point nine nine eight one. What do y'all say? That's right. Got that. Next question. You're gifted and talented. When done, when, when does the homework terminate toward the end of the unit? I give you an extra day. We'll talk about that in a minute. 20, 10, 50, 20. The only one that equals 100. Although I covered the handouts, email him his cell phone. No way, no how. Come on, it's not supposed to put all those together. Give me a boosted call. Yeah, girl. <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, actually, that's the reason I put them on here. And a lot of people say, why do you put those on there? Well, it all came down a while back. We were supposed to take things from our handouts and put on here. Well, I just changed it because I was getting so many DA questions at the end of the semester. I just said I'll start doing it. I'll just start, you know, doing the DA questions and put a few things. There you go. Perform the calculation. And that's where all these questions come from. I, you know how many I had to begin with? Five. I had two questions for my syllabus, for my handouts, my the rank, uh, my phone number, and my my military service. That's the only, and I had three DA questions, and the three DA questions have expanded to about 15. And they all come from people that don't read their what, their handouts. So what have we learned today? So if somebody do that. It's going to be. 42 degrees. Whoa, two, how do you do that? 42 degrees. Uh, two uh, inches. Two inches. I don't know what. Two minutes. How about minutes? Minutes. 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 minutes and then 43 seconds. Okay, did everybody get that? Yep. Put a second and then there's We went over that the second week of class. You might want to, you know what? We I might want to take this notebook and put things in it to refer back to. <laughs> I don't know how to use it. All right. <laughs> Tangent of pi over four. Tangent of pi over four. What is pi over four? Pi over four. So 180 over four, which is what? Dang old 45 degrees. Five. And what is tangent? I had a hunk of apple. That's one over one. Mm -hmm. So the tangent is what? Mm -hmm. Y'all settle down. All right, there's our question that we went over the other day. So. Ooh, yay. That one. So 
So this one we've got two angles. We've got x plus, we've got the first angle, I mean the first triangle is x plus 155. And that's 12,10. And we've got the second angle, our second triangle is x and 22,20 and h. H is going to be the same for both, so you want to focus on H. H is equal to H, so you're going to set them equal to each other. Um, I would say, let's see, yeah, Oscar had a hump, so that would be of apple, that'd be the tangent. So tangent of 1210 is equal to h over x plus 155 and then tangent of 2220 is equal to h over x multiply both sides by x multiply both sides by x plus 55 so that's going to give us Basically, H or X plus 155 times the tangent of 1210 is equal to H, and this is equal to H, X times tangent of 2220. Now you're going to have to distribute that tangent. And that's going to give you x tan of 1210 plus 155 tan of 1210 is equal to x tan of 2220. So somebody tell me what 155 tan of 1210 is. 155 times the tangent of 1210. Make sure it's in degree mode. What is tangent of 1210 times 155? Get a calculator and do it, or what? Three, three nine. Okay, speak up, please. Thirty-three point four. Okay, everybody get that? Yep. Yep. Okay, thirty-three plus x tan of twelve ten. Now I got to take this tan and bring it over here so I can get it equal to something. So equals. Let's see, that's equal to that. So I'm going to bring this tan over. And that's going to give me 33.4 is equal to x tan of 2220 minus x tan of 1210. Now, what am I going to do with that? Factor out what? Factor out of x, and that leaves me with tan of 2220 minus tan of 1210. And now I'm going to divide. So x is going to be equal to 33.4 divided by tan of 2220 minus tan Can y'all not hear that, or is it just me? Yeah. I hear it. Okay, 12, 10. All right, so do that for me. Take 33.4 and 
and divide it by, or take tan of 22.20 minus tan of 22.10, get that number, and then divide that into 33.4, and tell me what you get. Round to the nearest whole number. That's what it says, right? 377. I say, did you say 377? Yes, sir. The final answer. Did everybody else get that? Somebody check it and verify it. I need two people before we go on. 377 is what one person got. I got 171. Okay, we got That's two conflicting. Got. Check it. I got 171. Okay, we got two 171s. Okay. <laughs> okay, we got three people that's working their calculator. What about the rest of y'all? Um, 171 versus 377. Which one is it? Got two 171s. It's 171. Okay. That sounds like the person that gave me 377, is it? Yes. Yep. Okay. 171. X is equal to 171. Now, if y'all told me all the right numbers to these equations, that's the right answer. But I'm not going to take credit for a wrong answer. I'm going to put it off on the Russians or students with calculators. So let's go ahead and put 171. You still, you still getting different numbers. All right, next question. All right, here's another one. Anytime, anytime you figure an angles, they're going to be on a test. Did you get 181? Sorry, 171. 171, okay. All right. A 10.5 meter fire truck. <laughs> we never use meters. 10.5 <laughs> meter fire truck ladder is leaning against a wall. Find the distance D. The ladder goes up the wall above the fire truck. If the ladder makes a 55 degree angle. That's fine. So you should be able to do this without any problem. So you got the angle here, your little man's down here, 55, 24. And that's you want the opposite, and you got the hypotenuse, Oscar half. So the sine of 55, 24 is equal to O over 10.5, and 10.5 times that. Somebody give me 10.5 times the sine of 55, 24. You know it's going to be less than 10.5, so if you come up with some crazy number like, okay, 8.6, do I have a second on that? 8.6. I don't care. Round to the nearest hundredth. What is it, 8.64? Yeah. 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 Now remember, these, these problems can change. I don't want you to think that I'm showing you exactly what your test is going to look like. It may have some of these. It may have different ones. 8.64. Next. The only thing you can count on is the bonus questions, which some of you will miss those. All right. Find the exact value of each part labeled. Uh, just label all of them. I remember okay. that. Okay. So two separate. We got a triangle there, 15, 90, and 45. And well, 45. Well, he's going to be. Um, and then that's and R. The same thing, so. And then R is going to be here. That's going to be R. And then you've got Q. And then you've got 30. And then this would be what? 60. Okay. So it looks like to me, if you had R, you could find a whole lot more. So I, I'm starting to hear zippers. Okay, so I need to make sure what time it is. Okay, so class is over at like 12.35, isn't it? Yes. Okay, just want to make sure it wasn't zipper finish time. All right, so we've got 45, you know, you can do this however you want to. Somebody give me R on this one right here. That's going to be, well, it's going to be pretty simple, but we've got the sign, sign is Oscar had, so it'll be 15 times the sine of 45, which is what? It's got to be larger than that. Are you sure it's times? 
Yeah, I don't think it's functional. Okay, it might be divided. divided. Sine 45 no, equals R over 15. I thought it was 15 times. Are they when you put a square root? Because it's a special triangle. Did they say special triangle? Include well, any radical. It's so that means they want the radical. Okay, so they want you to do. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. All right, the sine of 45. <sighs> so it, the 15 times the sine of 45 is not going to. So what are you going to do? Let me erase that because that's not going to work. So that's going to be when you got 1, 1. So this is going to be 15. That's going to be 15 on the bottom. And the square root, you're going to have to do. I'm, I'm just. So that's going to be 15 plus 15 squared is equal to square root. So the square root, 15 squared is 225 plus 225. Y'all check me. 225 is going to be 450, and that's going to be the square root of 450. Okay, I'm just doing it. Okay, so the sine of theta is equal to Oscar hat, so that's going to be opposite is 15 over the square root of 450, so that's 15 over the square root of 450, which is going to be equal to 15 times the square root of 450, over 450 to what? Um, yeah. Well, it's going to be equal, let's see, 15 is 5, 3, and what, 150? I'm just going to reduce it down because I don't know what they want. Um, it can be 450, reduced. that's going to be 1 over 50, and that's going to be square root of 9, the square root of uh, 50. I'm, I'm just doing it old school. That's going to be 3, square root of 25, square root of 2, 50, which is going to be 3 times 5, right, is 15, square root of 2 over 50, which is going to be equal to what? 5 will go in there, 10, it's going to be 3, square root of 2 over 10. Somebody check me. 3, square root of 2 over 10. Now that's if they want, which I, let's see, we did R, so R is equal to what? 15 or 2. R is going to be equal to, let me see how, I don't know if they're want. are they wanting square roots on this thing? It says including radicals. Yeah. I think they just want you to figure out what that, the uh, yeah, that's right. actual value of each I think so. thing is. So like well, I R think I just found R, R, did I not? 50. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I guess square root of 45, okay, square root of 450, 450, I, I'm sorry, I, I misread the question. It is equal to 15, 3, let's see, did I get 9, yeah, 9 square root of 50? I'm just making sure I did that right. So 3 square root of 2 would be R. Is that what y'all come out with? Yeah, right here, 4 square root of 50. Well, right it. here. R's supposed to be bigger than 15, though. Yeah, wouldn't it be just 15 root 2? What? No, the 45 angle is 1, 1 square root of 3. What I did is I expanded it. 1, 1 square root of 2. Yeah. So that would be, oh, I forgot the square root of 2. I forgot to add that to it. So, what do you so do? that would be 15, 15, and then square root of 2. This is a cool question. It's a whole lot easier if you just do it by the calculator. I think I'll take that one off. All right, sounds good to me. Okay, I'll take that one off. Not because of the not because of the math, because the question is very vague. I mean, we know how to do it. I mean, I don't know if you know how to do it or not, but it's a very vague question. Let's go. Let's go to another question, if y'all don't mind. Okay, do that one. At least we can do that one. I, I won't go back to that one. I don't understand what they're asking. Here. 
Of course, this is just a conversion, so you should be able to do that. It'll be 180 over pi, 30, 30 times 11, and then you got to convert it to a regular, okay, convert, follow, yeah, to a degree. So you got to figure out how many revolutions it is. It's 330. So. It's, yeah, it's 330 because. Well, hold on, and let me show the rest of the people. 11 pi over 6, and then multiply that by 180 over pi, and that's going to come out to be 6, and that'll be 30, and then 11 times 30 is some VA number. What's 11 times 30? It'll be 330. Okay. Is that right? Yep. So that's your angle, 330. Like I said, I'm not here to trick you. If I see a question that I don't like, I'm not going to give it to you. Next question. Convert the following radian measure to degrees. So that's 187, 1.87 what? Degrees over what? <coughs> One. Then you got to multiply that by what? Pi over 180? So that'd be 1.87 over 1 multiplied, and that's degrees, right? Radians, that's for the following radian. It's just missing so, the pi, I'm guessing. So the pi would be on the bottom. Yeah. Yeah, pi would be on the bottom, 180. All right, multiply <laughs> that out, and that'd be degrees. So 180 times 1.87, what does that come out to be? Convert it to minutes and seconds. So what does it come out to be? 336 degrees and 36 minutes. Okay, is that what everybody got? Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it, class. Sorry. 336 what? About 36. Sorry, what? 36 minutes. 36 minutes. Is that what you got? I'm going by you, so somebody tell me if that's not yeah, right. Not okay. Sine of pi over 4. Again, you're talking about pi over 4 is what? 180 over pi, which is 45 degrees. So what's the sign of 45 degrees? Square root of 2. Wait a minute. Square root of 2 over 2. Next. And overall grade. And convert this one. Well, 15, first of all, 15 is a quarter of what? Of 60. So that's going to be 50.25, right? Yep. Right. So 50.25. Next. When is the week of finals? The only one that wow. was there. When is the last day of class? The only one that makes what? Because we're not going to have class on in 2021. Okay, so I'm trying to think. That's it. That's the last. So I think the only we only missed. Let's see. It even tells you we have one answer. So we made an 86. At least I'm probably rounding, but. Okay, what did we put here? See, y'all told me wrong. Okay, 0.99. So somebody, somebody. Wait, we never told you negative. Oh, wait, never mind. That's why. What? That so check that one. Let's see what else we missed. Ooh, we got that one wrong. We'll have to check that one. I can go over these Monday. I think I'm just going to do that Tuesday. We'll go over the three that, that we had questions on. We'll go over them Tuesday. Okay, this one. That's the one they were asking. Yeah, that's the one they want to reach. Okay, so that was my mistake. And the last one. Uh -oh, is, it zip, is it zipper fetish time? Yes. I thought I had five more minutes. 
Oh, you got 15, bro. Yeah, yeah. What? You got 15. Oh, yeah. Well, I just wondered. Everybody's packing up like I'm fixing to leave or something. It's always penalty on campus. Okay, 107.9. What did we do wrong there? I thought we did something wrong on that one, too. All right, we'll cover those Tuesday. And since everybody's ready to leave, I guess we'll go over. If you want to go ahead and do the test, go ahead. But we'll... we'll, we'll you go ahead and do the first test, and we'll leave the second test to next week, and I might extend it a few days, okay? All right. Y'all have a good day. See y'all when? Tuesday? See y'all. Anybody got any questions?